Do you know if this lamb was originally sold as Easter decor? Because the long legs make it look like nursery decor to me. I could tell the legs were made from wood dowel rods, so I just used my miter shears to chop off the bottom half of each leg. That step alone made the lamb look so much better. But wait until you see what I do next. This is going to be the cutest lamb you've ever seen. Do you own a bunch of old and out of style spring decor? Well, don't replace it just yet. I recently went thrift shopping and intentionally purchased outdated, damaged, and just downright ugly spring and Easter decor. And today I want to share several ideas for transforming these items into beautiful and unique home decor. I can't wait for you to see how the long-legged lamb turned out. So let's get started. When I was digging through my stash, I came across this rocking base that I had removed from a previous thrift store purchase. I hammered the two dowel rods until they were even with the base and used miter shears to cut them shorter on the underside. Then I sanded over the top of the base and painted it with two coats of moss green paint to match the stripes on the lamb legs. Once the paint was dry, I lightly distressed the edges. To attach the lamb, I applied a good amount of wood glue to the bottom of the dowel rod legs and centered it on the base. I set it aside and let the wood glue dry for several hours. Although it was secured to the base, one of the legs was a little shorter than the others, so I applied a small amount of caulk around the bottom of each leg to fill in any gaps and add extra stability. I began wondering what else I could add to increase the cuteness factor and decided to put a small bird on the sheep's head. Then I got another idea. I cut a pom-pom off a roll of pom-pom trim and then pulled on it to pull out a strand of fuzz. I hot glued the pom-pom into an empty space on the sheep's head and then hot glued the strand of fuzz into the bird's beak. I wanted it to look like the bird was using the wool to pad its nest. So of course, I needed to add a nest to the base. Sometimes I use pre-made nests, but this time I made my own using angel vine shaped into a circle and wired into place, adding a bit of pillow stuffing and moss inside. I thrifted this woven carrot-shaped basket for $2. It was in excellent condition, but in my opinion, the overly bright colors were making it look juvenile. So, to tone it down, I brushed white wax over the inside, bottom, and sides, using a paper towel to dab away the excess. It was much improved but I decided to brush on some watered down antiquing wax over the white wax to tone the color even more and give it a more aged appearance. Although the basket is cute as is, I thought it would make adorable wall decor. I started by gluing a piece of styrofoam along the whitest part of one side then I began gluing green reindeer moss over the styrofoam. Once it was fully covered, I began adding some faux plants and flowers to the sides and top of the styrofoam. I intentionally chose some orange flowers to coordinate with the basket. I also hot glued two small rabbit figurines to the moss. I wanted to add another tall element to the styrofoam, so I grabbed one of those small Dollar Tree chalkboard signs. Then I printed out an image of a garden sign on regular copy paper 
and adhered it to the chalkboard sign with glue stick. I rubbed sandpaper around the edges of the sign to remove the excess paper. To hang the basket, I just ran some twine through the top side of the carrot. I also tied a ribbon to the twine on the inside of the carrot. I thrifted this concrete lawn ornament for $16. I'm curious, do you think I overpaid considering the condition of one of the ears? Well, I'm crossing my fingers that I can fix it. I bought a tube of pre-mixed concrete patch from Amazon for $5. I squeezed the concrete mix into the broken ear and spread it around and shaped it with my finger and a plastic knife. It was actually quite easy. Unfortunately, you can't see it because I didn't realize that when I stood the rabbit upright, it was off camera. I let the concrete dry for several hours and then sanded over the concrete patch. Next, I painted over the new concrete to try to match the color of the rest of the rabbit. The paint I used was a little too light, so I brushed some antiquing wax over the wet paint and kind of blended the two together, dabbing away the excess with a paper towel. Just play around with different paint colors until you're happy with the results. It may not be perfect, but probably no one will notice but you. doesn't have an old wicker basket that's starting to come apart. If you've ever tried to repair it with glue, then you know it's only a short-term fix and eventually you end up throwing the basket away. So here is a better idea. Glue down the loose pieces with hot glue, clamping them in place so they don't pop out. Then begin hot gluing some lace trim around the basket. The lace I'm using was removed from an old stained thrift store tablecloth. Remove the clamps as you approach the broken areas and continue gluing on the lace. The lace reinforces the wicker and keeps it from popping out again. My basket is now repaired and should last a long time, but of course, I couldn't stop there. Since today's video challenge is about spring and Easter decor, I thought the basket needed some additional embellishments. I cut some floral stems very short, just long enough for the stem to stick through the side of the basket about half an inch. I played around with the arrangement, adding some faux berries and greenery between the flowers. Once I was happy with the arrangement, I hot glued the stems in place on the inside of the basket. Depending on how your flowers are made, you might be able to hot glue them directly to the basket, but sometimes the flowers fall apart if you completely remove the stem. Once glued in place, I trimmed the stems a bit more. Then to conceal them, I cut a small piece off of a thrift store placemat and hot glued it over the stems. If you don't like how this looks, alternatively, you could make a fabric liner that completely covers the inside of the basket. These paper whites had definitely seen better days, but I thought the pretty bowl alone made them worth saving. 
To freshen them up, I started by removing the additional small flowers that had been added to the vase around the base of the paper whites. There were also some faux bulbs that I removed because they were not very realistic looking. Then I was ready to give it a good cleaning. I thoroughly sprayed the leaves and flowers with silk plant cleaner. You can find this at Hobby Lobby, Walmart, or Amazon. I once even found it at Dollar Tree. These steps alone made a huge improvement, but I wasn't done. I wanted to add some angel vine around the top of the vase. To make it easy on myself, I used a piece of vine that was already wrapped in a bundle. Then I just wrapped it around the flowers and wired the two ends together with some black florist wire. To keep the vine from shifting, I pushed a couple florist pins through the vine and into the styrofoam. And finally, I added a little Spanish moss inside the vine ring for additional texture and to conceal my florist pens, which are silver. If you saw last week's video, you may remember that I took the clock parts out of this orange clock to use on a plate. I debated whether to paint the clock, but I thought the orange color could be nice. So instead, I applied white wax to the clock, brushing it on and dabbing it off with a paper towel. I felt this gave it a lighter appearance, more appropriate for spring. To cover the inside back wall of the clock, I printed out a Beatrice Potter illustration of Mr. McGregor's garden, which is in the public domain. I cut it to fit on the clock's back wall and just adhered it with a good quality glue stick. Next, I cut a thin piece of styrofoam to fit across the inside bottom of the clock and hot glued it in place. To make Peter Rabbit's jacket, I just drew a simple jacket shape on a piece of scrap fabric. I folded the fabric over and pinned it in place so I could cut out the front and back pieces at the same time. I just hot glued the edges together, leaving the bottom open. Then I cut through the middle of the front piece so it looked more like a jacket. And for buttons, I hot glued on three tiny beads. Next, I cut a small piece off a craft or skewer stick and hot glued the small piece near the top of the stick to create a cross shape. I hung the shirt from the cross and stuck the stick into the styrofoam. After hunting through my stash of tiny embellishments, I used Bondix to attach a tiny bird to a shovel handle but super glue would also have worked. I hot glued a plastic rabbit and a watering can to the styrofoam. Next, I hot glued moss over the areas of bare styrofoam. I had one small piece of white fencing left that I hot glued in the bottom outside corner of the clock. I thought the rabbit should be holding a carrot, but I didn't have any really small ones. So, I made some using air dry clay. I just rolled a small piece of clay in my hands to form a carrot shape. Then I poked a hole in the top of each carrot. I added a drop of Gorilla Glue into the holes and stuck in tiny pieces of greenery. I let the glue dry for a couple of hours and then I painted the carrots with orange chalk paint. Lastly, I added a few tiny flowers poking through the fence and some vines running up the opposite side of the clock. I actually glued two leaves over a top corner where the clock was damaged. When the paint on the carrots was dry, I glued one to the rabbit's front feet. As a final touch, I created a small sign and printed it out on copy paper. 
Then I used glue stick to adhere it to a piece of thin cardboard. I like to use old cereal boxes. Finally, I hot glued the sign to the top portion of the clock. I'm guessing that most of you have plastic eggs lying around somewhere. And you've probably seen videos where people paint or decoupage over them. But here's an idea you may not have thought of. Tear up a few pages from an old book and then tear the pages into small pieces. You can apply Mod Podge to the egg and then press the paper into the Mod Podge or you can brush Mod Podge on the back of the paper and adhere it to the egg. I found that the paper adheres faster when applying Mod Podge to the paper pieces. Just continue this process until the egg is completely covered. Next, I pulled out some pressed and dried flowers that I had ordered from Amazon and brushed Mod Podge to the back of individual flowers and added them to the eggs. To get them to lie flat and to protect them, I brushed a somewhat thick coat of Mod Podge over the top of each flower. I had to cut some of the fern fronds a little smaller to get them to lie flat. I recommend applying flowers to one side of the egg and waiting until the Mod Podge is dry before doing the other side. I wanted to add these eggs to a sweet little thrift store basket. And I wanted to make my own shredded filler to coordinate with the eggs. So I cut up a few more book pages into skinny strips and scrunched them up in my hands before adding them to the basket. I thought the basket would be even cuter with a handle. So I cut a viney bendable stem to fit across the top of the basket. To hold the vine in place, I ran some florist wire through the side of the basket around the vine, twisting it tight to hold it in place. I did this twice on each side, once near the bottom of the basket and once closer to the top edge of the basket. To accentuate the basket's scalloped edge, I hot glued some lace trim around the outside edge so that the lace protruded above the top of the basket edge. At this point, I added my paper strips and a few greenery stems into the basket, but then I decided I wanted a second row of lace ribbon around the basket. What do you think? Because I can't decide which is cuter, the eggs or the basket. I actually thrifted these vintage Easter figurines for one dollar because half of the blocks are missing. It was supposed to spell out Happy Easter. I thought about replacing a couple of the letters to make it spell just Easter, but then I decided to go in a different direction. Instead, I popped off all of the letters and then used a razor blade to scrape off any residual glue. Then I just used a white paint pen to freshen up the paint on the front design of each block. Since most of the strings for hanging these blocks were broken, I just pulled out what was left with needle nose pliers. I looked through some leftover rub-on transfers that I had and found six flowers that were small enough to fit on the front of each block. These are just inexpensive transfers from Amazon. I rubbed the transfer with a plastic scraper until it released from the paper and adhered to the block. I didn't like that you could see the small hole on top where the hanging string had been, so I decided to cover it up with some tiny flowers. I tried to choose flowers that resembled the flowers on the front of the blocks.
This wicker watering can was in pretty good condition, but the dark gray paint wasn't sending me spring vibes. So once again, rather than repainting it, I thought I'd brush on white wax to add dimension and tone down the solid gray paint. To decorate it, I started by grabbing a small bird's nest, which I attached to the watering can using black florist wire. For a pop of spring color, I added several faux forsythia stems behind the nest. I thought the yellow was a nice contrast to the gray wicker. For something unexpected, I hot glued half of a real eggshell inside the bird nest. I thought I needed some greenery drooping over the front side of the watering can, so I stuck a couple small ivy vines into the nest. Next, I added Spanish moss inside the nest, and I also added a little bit inside the egg and topped it with a tiny bird egg. Now there was only one thing missing. Of course, I had to add a bird. I didn't want to risk breaking the fragile shell, so I added the bird to the nest instead. I hope today's video inspired you to refresh and reimagine the spring decor you already own. And as always, please let me know which of today's projects was your favorite. And if you'd like even more DIY spring decor ideas, Here's another video I think you may enjoy.